Yeah, so uh, my name is Rob Crane. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of the uh, Worcester Red Sox. And, um, I, and uh, I think, you know, we started this ballpark project 2018, I think. It was my first meeting about it. And, uh, you know, now we're opening the park in 21. And, um, you know, it's been, there's a pre-pandemic phase of it and a post-pandemic phase of it. And uh, now, now that we're kind of trying to get this ballpark open, it's, you know, from, um, from our, from our, you know, from us, it's trying to communicate and communication is actually harder than it's ever been. Um, and that's probably one of the bigger challenges that we face is just communicating to our staff about what's happening. Um, 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 uh, you know, what's going on, what are the, um, what are the, um, what are the issues that we're dealing with? um and what they need to do and no one's in the same room anymore right so um you know you, you can't everything so in my opinion formalized with zoom meetings right we have to make a zoom call to talk about normal stuff that you might just you know see someone in the hallway and now instead of just talking to someone in the hallway for five minutes you know you've got a uh, eight people in an hour-long meeting and uh and that's uh, that's a challenge that we're all trying to face. I'm not sure I've done a good job or a bad job about that, but um, you've just got to try to do your best to communicate. And I think that's probably one of the more difficult. You know, this is my third new ballpark. It's probably the hardest thing that's different than compared to the other two. Is okay. I'm at home right now. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know the feeling, especially at softball. We, if, if there's a full team meeting, it's everyone in your dorms get on Zoom or spread out around the facility and get on Zoom because uh, the capacity, it's like four people are allowed in the head coach's office with masks. Yeah, right. It's just and we, uh, have, we have a roster of 25. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you can't do anything. So it's the, it's the, it's just hard. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I mean, diving right into the issues, like uh, uh, what other added obstacles did COVID add to building the ballpark itself? You know, did you guys see, like, right off the bat, did you have to stop construction? Did you have COVID outbreaks that set the schedule back or anything like that? Yeah, the, they shut down construction in Massachusetts for seven or eight weeks um, in, you know, March and April of 2020. Um, so that set everything back and then everything becomes more expensive. Um, you know, and the guys working now, they, they've got to, um, you know, keep socially distanced and it's hard to build something socially distant. Right. So uh, it takes more time. It takes more labor. It takes a lot of um, a lot more. Um, takes a lot more effort. Um, and then for us, you know, it's you've got season ticket holders saying, can I come to the games? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, and then you've got, you know, sponsors wondering the same things. And you're going, I, I don't know. Um, so it's provided you a heck of a lot more questions. Most of us who run baseball teams or sports teams in general are very, they like to plan stuff out, right? It's like, okay, opening day is this. These are the ceremonies that we're going to have. We're going to do this. Uh, this is the ticket packages. We're going to do this. We're doers, right? We just go and do stuff. Um, and now you can't do anything because you're not in control anymore. Or at least I guess you're never really in control if you want to get philosophical, but um, at least you feel like it. The, uh, and uh, you know, and with the pandemic, it's really taking the control out of your hands, which making which make things a lot more difficult. Yeah, that's another thing I was going to ask you because I know you do a lot with the sponsorships and the season ticket holders. You know, how challenging was it for like you and managing your staff and trying to sell tickets and sponsorships when you didn't know? Are we going to play in May? Are we going to play in July? Are we going to play a full schedule or not? Yeah, you, you Are just, we going to have full capacity or not? Uh, we still don't. We have no idea what's going on. So you just go and you say, hey, we'll figure it out when we need to figure it out. And, um, you know, you've, this is where relationships come in. This is where, um, you know, personal um, relationships come in. This is where a lot of this stuff works. And um, I'm, uh, uh, you know, we, so you've got to just communicate with your partners um, um, and 
you know, say when I know something, I'll let you know. Right. And it's hard, but you keep got to saying that oh, when I know something, I'll let you know. When I know something, I'll let you know. And we still don't know anything. So, so would you say that's basically been like a real key point for you is just be able to build that trust with those partners. So when you tell them, Hey, like, I don't know anything that they still hold by you and say, all right, we trust you. We'll wait for when you get further word on when you actually know something. Yeah, that's uh, a big thing is, you know, is, uh, is building that trust and being trustworthy, right? Is you just got to tell the truth and it's hard. It's, uh, not that trust is not hard. Uh, the, the truth is not hard. What ha- What's hard is having the hard conversation, right? And um, it's, it can be, it's just difficult, but uh, you know, you just got to do it and you just got to talk to people and you just got to walk through these things. And uh, it's all about communication. A lot of times it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Um, and I think there's a lot to be learned from that. Okay. And I mean, so, you know, from the situation, you, know, you said that Massachusetts shut down the uh, construction. Um, you know, I, I wasn't home yet. I was still down in South Carolina when that was happening, when that whole phase was going on. I didn't come home till May. Um, so were there any decisions you guys made to try and at least get it back somewhere on schedule where it was supposed to be? Did you, was there a effort to try and cut the cost? Cause I know you said seven, eight weeks, that makes everything more expensive because you go over the date. I, you know, I'm probably not the best one to t- uh, talk to about that in all honesty, uh, Patrick. I, um, you know, my, my, um, uh, my role, I'm not in the trailers every day and, you know, talking to the construction folks and, um, I just don't want to, uh, um, you know, overstep my, I, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't think I can give you a solid answer about that because it just wasn't there. Okay. Uh, and then, so, I mean, maybe, maybe you can answer this, maybe not. Were, were there any policies that you guys, not just for the construction, but for the people in the office that you put in, you know, were, were you required to, you know, do temperature checks in the morning, get COVID testing? Yeah. So one of the things in the summertime, we did a, um, dining on the diamond where you could, where you did, uh, we cha- turned the outfield of McCoy Stadium, our old place in Pawtucket, in, uh, in Pawtucket, into a restaurant. So we worked when we created revenue and we did this thing and um, it worked out great. Um, and we did put in some policies. You know, we had to fill out one of these questionnaires where we're feeling sick or whatever. Um, socially distanced masks, you know, all that stuff. Um, and we were able to do it with, you know, pretty limited uh, pretty limited issues. So, um, it's definitely one of the things that, uh, it was that dining on a diamond, you know, uh, saved a lot of our jobs, I think. Hey, uh, were there any other, you know, ways that you guys got creative like that other than the dying the diamond to try and just generate revenue in a time where, you know, you're supposed to be in the heart of the season, having full stands, the full triple A season going on. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I, we, we tried some drive through giveaways. We had a bunch of giveaways left over. So we did drive through giveaways. Um, we did the dining on the diamond was the biggest one. And then we continued just to push. Uh, we had to run our, our best merchandise, you know, non game day years, right? So people buying merch, uh, non game days when we, you know, tried to do celebrations and, 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 uh, and, and, and the like, especially when it was the last season of McCoy stadium. And, um, you know, it's kind of tough for the people of Pawtucket because they lost the final year to um, to COVID. Yeah, I was just going to say it was a difficult to try and sell the uh, the old Paw Sox gear when I know, you know, I, I follow the, the Sox on Twitter and stuff. And you guys, I mean, the amount of jerseys you have in new gear, it's it's incredible. And people were trying to hop on that. Do you find it kind of difficult to sell off the old gear or were people? No, people very nostalgic. Uh, it wasn't that wasn't the case at all. It was it was pretty not nothing's easy in life, but, uh, you know, it wasn't, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, part of us were worried, are we going to get with hostility? And that was never the case. Yeah. I mean, that's great to hear. I mean, that's always difficult when teams leaving, but when the the community rallies around it to, you know, kind of give it the good farewell that they deserve, even though COVID took it. Yeah, no, it's, it was tough, but we, we did our best. Okay, and then uh, you know, from your perspective as a you know the chief revenue officer, uh, uh, how were you able to you know manage the morale of your department, like the people under you trying to sell tickets, sell sponsorships, and you know just keep giving them a positive outlook when 2021 was just a complete question mark until you know basically today when you start finding stuff out. 
Um, I, I don't, I try to, but I think one of the things that you do, at least the way I manage is you can empathize with them, right? I was a sales guy once and ticket sales guy, right? You know how it works. And, um, you know, you just want to empathize with them. You just want to know that you can, that you understand what they're going through and try to work through it. And I think that we probably set more meetings just to talk to people, right? Um, cause at that time, you know, in the, in the summertime and in the fall, you're a little bit quarantined, right? You, yeah, <laughs> you can't go very, very much, you know, now it's hope it's opening a little bit more. Right. Um, but you know, before you just quarantined and that was hard and that stunk and that wasn't great. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that, uh, I just felt like, we're just going to talk a lot <laughs> and, you know, if we did a bi-weekly meeting, we changed it every week. And if we did, you know, a couple group, we did one group meeting a week, we might do two just to stay in touch. Okay. So, so basically it was just more of a, you know, try and keep people involved, try and keep people, you know, engaged instead of it's toning exactly, out. And just, it's exactly. It's exactly it. Just try to keep people engaged. Yeah. I mean, especially I know from, because I was home all summer. I mean, my usual summer job was kaputs. My, my routine was, you know, go to the grocery store, go work, come home, go hang out with some friends at someone's house. That's yeah. it. <laughs> and here we're here doing nothing, right? Was, you know, I had a kid in September, right? So it was like and super quarantine, kind of a little bit before that and a little bit after that. So yeah. you were doing, I was doing nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know the feeling. Our our head coach is one of the more over precautious because last week she told us uh, she's pregnant with twins. So oh, there you go. Congratulations, to her. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I mean, so some lessons you learned from it. You know, were there any you know skills or anything you learned from this experience that you know maybe helped you as an individual as a manager? You know, kind of improve your managing skills of people that you didn't know before. I think communication, I think, you know, making sure that you almost you have a personal relationship with everybody and, um, uh, you know, that will get you through way more than any kind of strategy. You know, when when people are they um, if you can have a one on one type relationship and I, you know, I try to I try to do that. It's hard because, you know, there's only so much time in the day. But um, I think as long as you have a if you have that type of. um mentality at least of saying like all right you know we got to we got to talk and just see what's going on like people just appreciate being heard and i think i learned that a lot is you know com- is is having this kind of open banter of you know um what's going on how are you feeling you know that question how are, how, are, how are you doing and being genuine about you know listening about it and uh you know having people be able to talk through it is it was important Okay. And I mean, then from, you know, the work perspective, did, did this situation teach you, you know, like anything new that you need to, like a new strategy or tactic to approach the the sales and the sponsorship game? Or One of the things in one of our podcasts, we interviewed Sam Kennedy, president of the Red Sox, and he said something that was important um, that I didn't, I don't think I understood real well. And he goes, know the document, right? Know the contract. And I always just said, let's just get a contract done and be done with it so I can move on with my life. Um, but I think now more than anything, is like, you got to know the document. What are you getting yourself into? And um, and I think that I know that documents, the documents pretty well now. And um, that was something that I think professionally this has helped me.